So I bought one of the biggest camshafts you can put in your LS3 Corvette. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to go over the total cost of doing a full cam job the right way. Now let me stress, other people are gonna have different opinions on what the right way is when it comes to installing a cam. There may be some parts on my cam kit that I decided to skip out on. But ultimately, if you are trying to cam your LS3, this is gonna be a pretty solid guide for you to use. If you've seen some of my videos before, welcome back to the channel. I'm glad to have finally picked up a cam for my LS3 Corvette. And if some of you are new, thanks for stopping in. I did also wanna start this video off by saying thank you to my subscribers and my viewers on this channel. My personal channel has seen quite a bit of growth in the recent months here, and I have you guys to thank for that. Let's go over everything I bought. So straight off the bat, the total cost of everything you see on this table is $1,877.04. I will also say that a lot of times you will get away with a cheaper total price for your cam kit. I did go out of my way and order a couple things that I thought I would definitely need just to provide some more stability. So first thing I ordered here was a brand new harmonic balancer for a LS3 dry sump Corvette. Now, if some of you know your LS motors in general, you'll know harmonic balancers on these motors are always a big issue. My year of the Corvette being a 2013 seems to really have less issues. However, I still went out of my way and I purchased this because I just did not want any issues, especially on the harmonic balancer side. Because if something like this fails, that's not good, especially with something as heavy as this thing wobbling. And with that, I picked up an LS7 style crank bolt. Now again, this is a dry sump car, so you essentially use the same balancer and the same pulley bolt as the uh, LS7 does. Next, moving on to the maintenance side of things, I have a brand new set of full gaskets for everything on the car. The valve cover, the water pump, you name it. We also have a brand new set of LS3 OEM head gaskets as well. Now these weren't necessarily needed, but I did pick them up just in case. These plugs are actually one step colder than the factory plugs you've used. They're the NGK TR6s. I've heard nothing but good things about these plugs. Now, I will note that these will foul pretty fast because of the material they're made of. They are made of a copper material, so they're only gonna last you anywhere from 10 to 15,000 miles, so I will have to change these somewhat often. But the performance you'll get out of them is only second to silver. Copper is the best conductor after that. Now we're getting over more to the fun box. I know you guys are waiting to look at the camshaft, the specs and everything like that. So let's just get that out of the way. Okay, so my camshaft of choice was a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 4 Naturally Aspirated Camshaft. I'm gonna put the camshaft specs up here for your reference. Now, ultimately, I went with this stage for Brian Tooley Racing Cam for a few reasons. I have the GoPro on a wide thing, so it makes it look like it's bent. <laughs> It's definitely not bent. Ultimately, the biggest reason for me choosing this camshaft is I didn't want a cam with too much lift, but I also wanted it to make a lot of power. Other stage four cams in the market had a lot more aggressive lift than this cam. I was also heavily focusing on the intake duration and the lobe separation angle when I was picking my camshaft. I wanted a high intake duration for the cam so it would have a whole lot of breath for the top end of the power band. I was also being somewhat conscious of the lobe separation angle. I didn't want something too aggressive on the naturally aspirated side of things. So ultimately I found a 113 lobe separation angle as being somewhere in the middle between a good NA cam and a good boost cam. So this cam should make some pretty killer power. Dino with this cam will be coming up in a future video. With a big cam swap, you definitely need to upgrade your valve springs. I went with a dual valve spring for a max lift of 660. So ultimately in doing so, this should keep my valve train stable under high RPM application. Now from what I've read, you don't necessarily need to pick up some lifters. Some people have even noted that LS7 lifters and LS3 lifters are actually the same part number. So in doing so, I picked up a set of Morel LS7 style lifters. I've heard nothing but great things about the Morel style lifters because they have actually a couple changes to the normal LS7 lifters. So these lifters Lifters should function pretty well under 7,000 RPM applications. Some more supporting valve train mods also include some chromaly push rods. Now I went with a 7.4 push rod. I've seen a lot of applications with the same camshaft run the same type of push rod as well too. And of course, when you can, you want to do a trunion upgrade on the rocker arms on these motors. What they essentially allow you to do is they allow the rocker arms to have more flexibility 
and more moving range. They also have little locks on the end so you don't get little needle bearings all in your motors if one of those breaks. Now I do actually still have three more lifter trays coming in. I did accidentally order just one lifter tray. I'm aware you need to order four, but I just goofed and I ordered one. Now what you generally wanna do is when you get new lifter trays, you want to stay with the GM lifter tray. Don't go and put an aftermarket lifter tray in your car. You don't want your lifters to spin. Also got a new timing chain dampener. That's needed while you're in there. Also picked up a heavy duty timing chain as well too. Might as well upgrade that as well when you're in there too. And finally, we also picked up a new thermostat. This is a 160 degree thermostat, which might be a little overkill. I was debating actually getting a 180 degree thermostat just because I thought this might actually run the motor a little bit too cool but we'll see how that works out. You don't have to purchase this when you get the cam kit, but I, I kind of got suckered into it. So I spent $15 on a assembly grade lube that you probably get for half the price. Now, one thing you guys might be noticing, especially if you have done a cam swap in the past, I don't actually have a new oil pump in here. Since my car has a dry sump boiling system and it actually has a high flow oil pump from the factory because of the dry sump system, I opted not to upgrade my oil pump this time around. My car also has relatively low miles as well too, to where I'm not really worried about an oil pump failing as of right now. Typically, if you are a non-dry sump car though, I would recommend picking up a more higher flowing oil pump because you know you want all these <laughs> components ultimately to have oil. But anyways, for the most part, that's my breakdown on all the parts I ordered for my cam kit your order might look a little bit different. So really apart from the new lifter trays, which I do have to add like another 30 bucks since I did forget that, I do have one more fun surprise coming for this car actually as well too. That will be in a future video. I'll go over what extra little bit, the extra little sauce I'm gonna put on this thing before it goes on a dyno. All right guys, that's gonna be it for now. Let me know if you have any questions for this cam kit or maybe for your specific application, I might be able to answer those. But I did wanna thank you for watching, especially if you made it this far in the video. Be on the lookout for some future installs with this camshaft as well as a dyno once the cam is finally installed on a car. There is a lot more new cool content coming out on this car because it's finally gonna be cammed. And again, with one of the biggest cams you can actually buy for these cars on the market. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you next time. for the C6 Grand Sport was 431.8 wheel horsepower and 403.4 wheel torque.